Once our garbage goes out to the trash, we usually think that's the end of it. It's rare we take the time to think about what happens next and where our garbage actually ends up. Today we're showing you some unexpected places your garbage could find itself spending the rest of its days. Here at The Hub, we've got videos to cover all of your favorite topics. So just before we start, make sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch you might think it's common to see a few pieces of garbage floating around in the ocean. You'll almost definitely see a few plastic bottles on the coast, and maybe as you're paddling in the sea, you'll come across a few more pieces of trash. But you'd have thought it would be safe to assume that the middle of the ocean is empty of trash, right? Unfortunately, you're wrong. Scientists have discovered a huge expanse of garbage floating in the middle of the North Pacific Ocean called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. It's also known as the Pacific Trash Vortex, which sounds slightly scarier and equally as dangerous. The patch is a collection of trash and marine debris that has fallen from ships. It's actually two distinct collections of debris, but they've slowly bound together by the North Pacific Subtropical Gyre. Captains who've crossed the region report never seeing a clear spot of seawater because of the huge amount of garbage blocking the view. They've mentioned bottle caps, wrappers, and different fragments of material, all of which have made their way there somehow. Sadly, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch isn't the only one of its type, but it's definitely the largest. There are also patches in the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. Underground Landfill sites are one of the most common places garbage is left. We try to recycle everything we can, but some things just don't make the cut and have to be left somewhere. There are landfill sites all over the country, and it's fair to say they're definitely building up. And because we're running out of space, the government is having to think twice about where the rest of the garbage goes. But instead of trying to think up innovative new ideas as to how we can get rid of our trash, in some places they're simply hiding the evidence. And they're hiding it underground. In Birmingham in the UK, for example, the mountains of trash are slowly becoming invisible, but only because grass is being planted on top of them. In many years time, those who walk around the landfill site might wonder why the ground beneath them feels so uneven. The site covers about 380 acres and contains more than 18.5 million tons of waste. What used to be flat land is slowly rising higher and higher as more and more garbage builds up. And underneath the grass is something even more potentially dangerous. The gases and chemicals building up in all that trash could end in disaster. The point of burying the trash is to extract the gases for electricity generation, but we still think we'd prefer to figure out how to recycle properly instead. Peanut the Turtle We see many heartbreaking photos of animals with bits of plastic attached to them or bags that they just can't break free of. If they don't end up dead, a lot of the time, they end up starving or seriously injured. Fortunately, some of these animals are found in time and are rescued, allowing them to go back to their normal, healthy lives. But what about when the animal is injured from garbage when they're young? One prominent case was Peanut the turtle, who got caught in a plastic bottle holder when she was only young. Unable to rid herself from the plastic, she lived many years of her life with it attached. Unfortunately, her body grew around the plastic, leaving her with a very deformed shell. She was able to survive, sure, but some of her internal organs were crushed. Luckily, someone found Peanut in 1993 and she was rescued. Her mobility has been affected and the shape of her body left her vulnerable to predator attacks. But more than 20 years later, Peanut is still thriving. Unfortunately, most animals who are caught in this situation don't have the same happy ending as Peanut. But improved recycling efforts go a long way to make sure more animals can live their lives free from garbage attacks. Changes in behavior. You might think the end of your bottle's life happens simply when you drop it, but that's definitely not true. Not only does dropped garbage affect the environment, it can also have a long-term effect on the species who have to deal with our carelessness. The chemicals slowly released by the buildup of garbage are incredibly dangerous for many different types of insects and birds, and especially starlings. One study into the effect of this pollution from garbage found that not only did it affect the birds directly, but it also went on to affect how they mated and how they reacted in day-to-day -day situations. One study found that male gulls exposed to one particular chemical become hyperactive and started to bully other gulls. Even though the study showed a direct correlation to garbage and pollution, it has gone largely unnoticed by toxicologists, who seem to ignore the effects garbage is having on our environment. And starlings aren't the only animals affected. It's thought that many changes in the animal world could have been affected by rising levels of garbage dropped. Maybe we should start expecting mutant animals in a hundred years time if things carry on this way. Nurdles. One of the worst types of garbage to harm the environment is a nurdle. You might not recognize the term, but you've probably heard of it before under the name microbead. Nurdles are small plastic pellets about the size of a lentil. Billions and billions are used every year to make plastic products, but because they take so long to break down, they're simply growing in size all the time. Plastic items get broken down slowly because they're so durable, and the substance used to create it is known and often praised for being so long-lasting. But while it's great that some of our products are so long-lasting, it's not so great when it comes to saving the planet. 
So by now, you've probably learned that nurdles are broken down parts of plastic, and that's where another problem lies. They're so small, they often get ignored or go unnoticed when people try to pick up trash. The nurdles then build up and form dangerous pollutants in the background, which results in animals and plants existing alongside the problem. Even worse is the fact that some animals mistake nurdles for food. By swallowing them, they're basically asking for a death wish without even knowing it. Fatbergs What do you call a giant lump of diapers, oil, wet wipes, and fat all clogged together blocking a drain? A fatbird, that's what. Yep, literally a block of fat, shaped a little bit like an iceberg. They occur when people don't dispose of their garbage properly, like throwing diapers down the toilet instead of putting them straight into the trash. Similarly, if you cook with oil and pour it down the kitchen sink, you're contributing to the next fatbird. A few of these have cropped up recently in drains in London, England. Just like icebergs, these fatbergs aren't just small lumps that can easily be removed by one person. Nope, engineers for Thames Water in the British capital use shovels and high-powered jets in order to break down the contents of the fatberg before sucking it up with impressive machinery. It's not something they can get rid of easily. The last giant fatberg that made the headlines was also found in London in 2013. Strangely enough, instead of dumping the fatberg once it's been broken down into manageable chunks, the Museum of London hopes to display it as an artifact so that when we've solved this problem, we can look back at the fatberg and simply admire it. Fish food. When we say garbage turns into fish food, we don't mean that somebody has found a revolutionary way to feed the environment with our trash. Maybe one day, but sadly, that day is not today. However, the animals affected by garbage don't understand that it's bad for them and fish have started to pick plastic over their food by choice. Scientists don't understand why, but even when given a choice between their own food and plastic found in the ocean, the fish seem to prefer the plastic. Not only does this show just how much damage dumped garbage is having on the environment, but it suggests it's not a short-term problem either. The perch fish that were studied were found to have higher mortality rates than usual, with stunted growth and changed innate behaviors. For example, they seem to lose the ability to smell a predator that made them much more vulnerable. The bigger problem here is that perch fish are pretty small, meaning they also get eaten by something higher up in the food chain too. So when plastic is ingested by one fish, which is then eaten by another fish, we can start to understand just how big the problem could be. Seabirds would you believe us if we told you nearly every single seabird in the world is eating some form of plastic garbage? That's right, the figure is currently around 90% and it's only expected to get bigger. So much plastic trash is flowing into the oceans at the moment that it's thought every single seabird will be consuming it by the year 2050. It's scary to see how the number has risen since scientists have been tracking the trend. When they first started in the 1960s, fewer than 5% of the birds studied had plastic in their stomachs. Now the number is right at the other end of the spectrum and with plastic producing growing all the time, the problem can only get worse. The global plastic production actually doubles in size every 11 years, which explains why the figure has grown so much in a short period of time. But this does also mean that in another 11 years time, it'll almost be a given that seabirds have some form of plastic garbage stuck inside them. The highest concentration of plastic in birds is found in places like Southern Australia, South Africa, and South America, where the most ocean debris is found. Boreo. By this point, you're probably feeling pretty downhearted about the state of our planet and how we seem intent on doing everything we can to make it a dangerous place for animals. So we thought we'd spend the last part of this video showing you some positive steps companies are making to improve the state of oceans using garbage. First up is Boreo, a company doing their bit to improve the lives of sea creatures who get caught up in netting. A lot of netting used for legal fishing accidentally gets dropped into the ocean. It's a form of garbage we don't tend to think much about, but it exists and it does a lot of harm to the poor creatures who get stuck in it and can't get out. Boreo Boreo trawls around the oceans looking for this material and turns it into something fun and safe. Skateboards. They calculated that discarded fishing nets account for around 10% of the plastic garbage dumped in the ocean. They help local communities too by providing financial support to those who keep plastic away from the ocean and inside the boats. Based in Chile in North America, they not only show the difference that recycling can make, but they're also targeting one of the places with the highest amounts of garbage in the world. TerraCycle. Another company making a difference with things we really didn't think we could recycle is TerraCycle. Sure, in certain parts of the world there are companies doing wonders with plastic recycling already, but what about things that you can't really recycle, like biscuit wrappers, coffee capsules, or cigarette stubs? TerraCycle takes these objects and makes them into products such as bags, benches, or dustbins. But what can you make from used cigarette stubs? Well, TerraCycle makes them into plastic pellets that can then be used in a number of different ways. The possibilities are endless. 
TerraCycle really seems to be taking off, and it's already got huge companies involved like McVitie's Biscuits, Johnson & Johnson, and Kenko involved. The company takes away their unwanted waste and makes new products out of it, and it doesn't only help the planet from big corporations, because TerraCycle takes garbage from individuals too, as long as they make a donation to a charity of their choice. The first product TerraCycle made was organic fertilizer before branching out and incorporating many different types of plastic found all over the country. So far, it's prevented 2.5 billion pieces of waste from going into landfill. We hope you enjoyed learning about where your garbage actually ends up today. Make sure you come back soon to hear all of our other interesting videos. Thanks, and see you next time!